The Global Business Report on Arise News. Recently, Flower Mills of Nigeria released its first quarter uh, on audited financial results. Revenues were up 14.7% year on year to 154 billion naira, while profit after tax was up by 17.3% to 4.9 billion. The company was able to grow revenues despite the impact of COVID-19 on various sectors of the economy in the three months between April and June. And for the record, the company's first quarter falls between April to June. Joining me to discuss the quarter, first quarter performance is Anders Christensen, Chief Financial Officer of Flower Mills uh, PLC. Uh, good afternoon to you, sir. You're welcome. Thanks for joining us. Um, just a few minutes ago, we were talking about one of your competitors in the food space recently closing a deal to increase the capacity of flour milling plants by 2021. Um, do you have expansion plans in, in uh, currently or for the future? And is the environment conducive for the players in the space to do so? Good afternoon, <clears throat> and thank you for uh, the question. Uh, we are the market leader when it comes to pasta and uh, wheat-based products in Nigeria. And we saw the announcement. Uh, we are continuing to invest in line with our long-term strategy, which is to maintain our market position and launch product that meets the need in Nigeria. So we are not doing anything immediate as a reaction, but we are continuously looking at the space and we are continuously investing to meet the consumer needs. Thank you for that. Okay, so we're looking at your your unaudited results right now. We have that up for uh, our viewers. Your revenue from agro allied sugar and food were all up in in double digits. Was that just you know good fortune that your product mix was classified as essential services, or how do you attribute uh, the re revenue growth for the first quarter in those segments? And I think the first quarter uh, was driven by a couple of factors. Uh, we have, for the last couple of years, since 2016, 2015, uh, invested into the agro space. We have invested into animal feed, we have invested in edible oil, and we have consistently ensured that we have a larger and larger locally sourced agro portfolio. That investment reached a critical mass last year with uh, protein and animal feeds picking up. And we saw at the latter part of last year, the edible oils coming up. We have also invested into value-added food products. We talked before about pasta. We are doing very well in terms of whole food, semovita, et cetera, et cetera. And we have launched additional product, what we call uh, B-brand, which meets the need of a large uh, constituency of the consumer market. So we launched a number of new products that were placed in maybe a more economical segment, with Golden Penny being our premium brand. And the combination of the investments we did in AgroLife, the combination of the new brand, plus we have also invested into the road to market to ensure that we need, need a larger and a larger uh, part of Nigeria and that we come into all the markets. So it's a combination of those three things. Okay, I want to focus on, on sugar since there's still an effort uh, from the federal government as far as backward integration and Nigeria being more self-sufficient. But for, for sugar imports, um, are you facing any cost pressures in that regard or with regards to you know, sugar prices? Uh, we are, of course, facing uh, competition from imported sugar and we are very heavily invested into backward integration. We today have 2,800 hectares in Niger State with Sunti, which we are taking up to 3,500 hectares in the initial stage. Um, so we are facing the pressure. We are, with time, learning how to operate a local sugar estate here. Uh, and we are now profit making at the Sunti estate. So we are facing pressure and we are trying to overcome them with uh, operating more and more efficiently and expanding uh, the local operations. Okay, thank you for that. Your, your CEO, uh, Paul uh, Badebo, he recently spoke to the media and said that your profits are facing foreign exchange risk. Uh, how significant are those foreign exchange risks? Uh, they are quite significant. We are still importing quite a bit. And what we are seeing is with the devaluation of the Naira, of course, there were pressures. What we, did, what we have done is, of course, we have to a certain extent invested into the backward integration that I kept mentioning. 
Uh, so we are having a larger and larger component of locally sourced products. We are also uh, looking at how we can derive more value out of the locally uh, of the imported product. So how can we sell more refined consumer products versus maybe more commodity-based product, which is why we are investing into pasta, noodles, semovita, etc., etc. And we are also taking cost out. Uh, we have embarked on a very focused cost-saving program to mitigate some of the FX impacts. Um, so we are feeling the pressure. As we could see from our full year results in quarter one, uh, we are able to mitigate it with focusing on local products, local value add, and uh, constantly challenging the cost structure. Excellent. Thank you for mentioning the cost structure. So again, we have your financials up. Your cost of sales there, 9.1% increase to 129 billion naira for quarter one. Um, is that mostly due to what we just talked about, foreign exchange, or are there any other cost hurdles um, that you faced in the first quarter? Um, there is, of course, a smaller exchange impact, uh, even if that comes a little bit further down in the p &L. If you look at the revenue, it's up 14.7%. If you look at the cost of sales, it's up 9.1%. So effectively, what we see is that the cost of sales is mainly volume driven. Thank you for that. Okay, uh, okay, go ahead. Go ahead, please. No, no, you can. You can so. Okay. So, um, so, so on, on the debt side of things, um, it's understood you're looking to issue another bond over the next two months as part of your 70 billion naira bond program. How much of that is refinancing for lower interest rates? Or how much of that is conservation of cash? Yeah, effectively, uh, we, are, we started a 70 billion bond program three years ago. Uh, we did a 20 billion tranche in the initial year. We did 20 billion in January this year. And we are looking at uh, issuing up to the remaining 30 billion tranche. And uh, we have a repayment plan of some of the loans and the first tranche of the initial bond coming within a 12 to 18 months period. Right now, we would not need to issue the bond at this stage. Given where the interest rates are, we believe that it's the right opportunity to raise longer term debt, five year or five year plus debt at this interest rate. So we are going to issue the bond within two months and we will then either preserve the cash in short term deposits until we need to use it or look at some of the short term financing that we have on the interim basis. Even if we have brought the short term financing down to 20% of the total financing. So it's more opportunistic. We would advise that we make within six months. Thank you for that. Um, so Nigeria's Q2 GDP figures just came out today. Contraction of 6.1% in the second quarter. A recession is feared uh, if, they, if they're negative again in the third quarter. How are the economic headwinds affecting your outlook moving forward? It's an interesting environment. It's a very interesting environment. We are, of course, uh, keeping a look at this at any time. Uh, what we have seen is that the segments that we are operating in, essential food, uh, locally sourced and local value add, is growing. We see a short and we see a long-term demand with the population growth and we need Nigeria becoming probably less and less uh, import dependent and more dependent on locally produced. Uh, so we are, of course, cautious of that. We see the bumps, uh, everything with the pandemic, etc. We overcame that in quarter one and quarter two. We believe that, or we are confident that the supply chain we have can handle it. And we see very positively on the long-term potential. Okay, if only got about, thank you, only got about 30 seconds. Can you confirm, in fact, that closing of Nigeria's borders reduced smuggling and helped your margins? It did, it did help. Of course, it did help. It basically showed us the potential of Nigeria if everybody are competing on an even playing field. We have seen positive impact on a number of segments. We used to say that roughly one third of the growth we've seen is coming from the closing of the border. Less, the rest is coming from the internal activities that we've overtaken over the last years. Fantastic. Thank you for that. The, the CFO of Flower Mills of Nigeria, Mr. Anders Christiansen, thank you so much for taking the time uh, to speak with us about your first quarter on audited results. Thank you so much.